Ever wondered why your computer can't just read your mind and do what you want it to do? Well, that's because it's not part of the IT crowd. Yet. Welcome to the marvelous world of information technology or IT as it's more commonly known. It's a realm where data is the universal language and computers, the eager students. But what exactly is information technology? In the simplest of terms, it's the use of systems, think computers and telecommunications, to create, process, store, secure, and exchange all forms of electronic data. Now let's embark on a quick journey back in time. The history of IT is a fascinating tale that starts with the humble abacus, a simple counting aid used centuries ago. Fast forward to the 20th century and we have the first programmable computer, a behemoth machine that could fill a room. And today we're riding the wave of artificial intelligence where machines are learning to think and respond like humans. But how do computers process data, you might wonder? Well, think of it like teaching a baby to understand and respond to words. We start with simple words and gradually introduce complex sentences. Similarly, computers start with basic binary language, the ones and zeros, and then move on to understanding complex codes that allow them to perform various tasks. It's a fascinating process that takes time and patience. And as with any learning process, there are hiccups along the way. Sometimes your computer might not get what you want it to do. It's like dealing with a toddler who's just learning to talk. They understand some words, misinterpret others, and completely ignore the rest. But remember, we're all learners in this vast universe of information. We're constantly teaching and learning, evolving and adapting. And who knows, maybe one day your computer will be able to read your mind. Until then, we'll continue to navigate this exciting world of IT together, exploring new concepts, unraveling mysteries, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So, the next time your computer doesn't get you, remember it's still in its terrible twos. Why do computers only understand ones and zeros? Well, because they're not bilingual like we are. Picture this, there's a room with a light switch, it's a simple mechanism. You flick it up, and the room is bathed in light. You flick it down, and you're engulfed in darkness. This simple on and off mechanism is what binary language is all about. The lights being on represents a one, and the lights being off represents a zero. Now imagine a room with millions of these switches. A combination of these switches being on and off creates a unique pattern. And this pattern is what communicates a specific instruction to your computer. It's like Morse code, but for machines. This binary language or base two system is the fundamental language of computers. It's a world where there are only two digits, ones and zeros, unlike our decimal system, which has 10 digits from zero to nine. But why binary, you ask? Well, it's because computers work on the principle of electrical charges. An electrical charge can either be present, representing a one or absent, representing a zero. When we type a letter on our keyboard, say A, the computer doesn't see the letter A. Instead, it sees the binary equivalent of A, which is a unique combination of eight ones and zeros known as a byte. This byte then triggers a specific action like displaying the letter A on your screen. In essence, the binary language is the DNA of computers. It's the foundation upon which the digital world is built. It's the language that computers use to perform tasks from the most mundane to the most complex. So next time you're typing away at your keyboard, remember you're not just hitting keys, you're sending a series of electrical charges, a series of ones and zeros that your computer interprets and acts upon. So if you ever feel like your computer is too simple-minded, just remember it's still trying to get the hang of its ABCs, or rather, its ones and zeros. Ever wondered why your computer is such a know-it-all? It's because it loves to eat data for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now let's imagine data as raw ingredients in a kitchen. You have a pantry full of them, numbers, facts, statistics, and observations. On their own, they don't make much sense. They're like raw vegetables, uncooked pasta, and spices. They're the building blocks, but they're not a meal yet. Information technology is the master chef in this scenario. It takes these raw ingredients, slices them, dices them, and cooks them into a delicious, meaningful meal. This meal is the information that we consume. Just like how a chef follows a recipe, IT follows algorithms or set rules to process data. Let's break it down further. The first step is data collection. This is like gathering your ingredients. The data can come from various sources like user inputs, online forms, sensors, and even social media posts. Next, we have data processing. This is where the magic happens. It's like the actual cooking. The data is cleaned, sorted, analyzed, and interpreted. It's like boiling the pasta, sauteing the veggies, and adding the spices. At the end of this step, we have transformed our raw data into cooked data. Then comes data storage. This is like storing your cooked meal in the fridge for later use. 
The information is stored in databases, ready to be served when needed. Finally, we have data retrieval. This is like taking out the meal from the fridge and serving it. The process data, now information, is presented in a user-friendly format, such as charts, reports, or dashboards. And voila! Just like that, our IT chef has transformed raw data into a delicious, meaningful meal of information that's easy to digest. So the next time your computer seems to know everything, remember it's just been binge eating data. Why can't we just download the entire internet? Well, because it's like trying to fit an ocean into a bathtub. Quite the visual, isn't it? But that's the reality of the internet, a vast, ever-expanding digital ocean. Imagine the internet as a global postal service. Every computer, every device is like a post office. It has a unique address, known as an IP address, and it can send or receive packets of information worldwide, just like mail. Now, just like the postal service, the internet relies on a network of routes to get each packet to its destination. These routes are the veins and arteries of the internet. Some are super highways carrying vast quantities of data, others are side streets for less trafficked areas. This network is what we call the internet backbone, and it's facilitated by a series of high-capacity data links and routers, much like a global highway system. But what's in these packets? Well, everything you see on the internet from this very video you're watching, to the latest viral cat meme, to the most complex scientific research. They're all broken down into packets, sent through the internet, and reassembled at their destination. Just like a letter, each packet also has a return address. This is how your computer knows where to send the information you're requesting. And just like the postal service, sometimes packets get lost or delayed. Ever had a video buffer or a web page take forever to load? That's essentially a packet traffic jam. And let's not forget about the World Wide Web which is actually just a part of the internet. If the internet is the global postal service then the World Wide Web is like the letters and packages being sent and received. It's all the websites, documents, images, videos and other resources that are accessed via the internet. In the vast playground of IT, the internet is the central hub, the beating heart. It's the infrastructure that allows information technology to connect, communicate and create. It's the digital ocean we all swim in. So the next time you're surfing the web, remember, you're riding the waves of the IT ocean. Will robots take over the world? Well, not if we remember to turn them off at night. As we drift into the future, the world of information technology is expanding beyond our wildest imaginations. We're not just talking about faster computers or more storage. We're venturing into an era where machines are no longer just machines. They're becoming more like our pets, learning new tricks every day. Imagine teaching your dog to fetch the newspaper. It's a process, right? You show them the paper, you throw it, they chase after it, and with a little encouragement, they bring it back. Now think of a machine as your pet. Instead of fetching newspapers though, these machines are learning to recognize patterns, predict trends, and make decisions. This is the essence of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is like the brain of the machine. It's the part that learns from experience just like your dog learns to fetch. Machine learning, a subset of AI, is the method by which this learning happens. It's the treats you give your dog when they successfully fetch the paper. The machine learns that when it does something right, it gets rewarded so it tries to do it again. But it doesn't stop there. Imagine if your dog could communicate with other dogs around the world, learning new tricks from them. That's the concept of the Internet of Things, or IoT. Devices are connected to each other across the web, sharing information and learning from each other. And this is just the beginning. As technology continues to evolve, who knows what tricks our machines will learn next. Maybe they'll figure out how to make our morning coffee just right, or predict traffic jams before they happen. The possibilities are limitless. So, the next time you worry about robots ruling the world, remember, they're still trying to figure out how to fetch the newspaper.